Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, sort array by increasing frequency. It's funny that this is actually very similar to yesterday's problem. And I think I mentioned yesterday or maybe the day before that sometimes you want to sort based on a custom key and languages have a different way of providing that. Python makes it very, very easy. I think most languages do have a way of providing that though. And this problem can most easily be solved by doing exactly this. So first let's get into what the problem is asking because it's not super trivial. So the idea is we're given an array, something like this. Every single one of these numbers has a frequency. So one has a frequency or a count of two, actually. It appears two times in the input array. Two shows up three times and three shows up a single time. So instead of sorting the input based on the values themselves, we want to sort each value based on the frequency of that value. So we want to do it in ascending order based on the frequency. So one is the lowest frequency that we have, and three is the only number with that frequency. It could have been possible, though, that we had multiple numbers. Maybe four shows up and it has a frequency of one. And we'll cover that case in just a second. But for now, let's consider this. Three will show up first. Next, we have a count of two. One has a count of two, so one's going to show up in the output array. But not only is it going to show up once, it's actually going to show up twice because that's how many times it appeared in the input. So we don't want to eliminate duplicates or anything like that. And lastly, two shows up three times, so we will add three occurrences of two in the output, and that's exactly what we're going to return. Now, let's get back into that other case, though, where suppose we had four and it showed up a single time. So now we have two numbers with the exact same frequency. So the straightforward thing to do would be to sort them in ascending order. So we could have two elements here, like the rest of the array was going to look the same. We're going to have a one twice, and then we're going to have two, three times. Sorry, I'll draw it down here. So now these are the elements that show up a single time. So we could have either put them like this or this, three and four, or we could put them like four and three. The annoying thing about this problem is that they actually want us to do it this way. They want us to only put them in decreasing order if there are elements with the same frequency. So this is kind of the complicated part about this problem. One way to solve it, sure, we could collect all elements with the same frequency. It might not just be one group. You can imagine that there could have been multiple sections that have elements with the exact same frequency and they could be very very long so what would you do would you individually sort each of these pieces because that's going to be n log n multiple times which i'm not even sure honestly what the big o time complexity of that would be i think it might still be n log n but there is a better solution and it's an easier solution to code up so that's the one i'm going to be showing you the idea is this when you call like a built-in sort method on an input array, so if we call built-in sort on the input array, we can pass in a custom key. So what do you imagine we want to pass in for the key? Like if we have an element one, what is the precedence that we want to give it? Well, remember, we're sorting based on the frequency. So of course, let's just calculate the frequency of each element, kind of like I did over here. The best data structure to use is usually a hash map for that. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll have that mapping. So then we'll say, okay, for the key, don't sort it based on the element num, sort it based on the count of num or the frequency of num. That will get us pretty far. That would give us an output that looks like this. Now, obviously, there is an issue with this output. It's this part where there are duplicates. It's kind of unpredictable. It'll sort it based on the count. And if two elements have the same count, we don't know if it's going to give us the desired result. So in Python, the way to do that is by adding like a second thing. Like if there's a tie with these, okay, then sort it based on something else. And the second key that we could provide is the number itself. If we do that, of course, though, when there's a tie, it's going to sort them in ascending order. Can you think of a possible workaround? We want to not do it in ascending order. We want to do the opposite. And that makes you think, okay, we'll try to reverse it. Well, that's hard to do. We'd have to reverse like each individual portion then. But the better way would be if it's by default sorting them in ascending order, the second key, instead of being the original number itself, could be the negative one multiplied by that number, or just, you know, in Python, it'll just be the negative of that number. So, for example, like the sort key for four would be this. It would be first the count of four, which is one, and then next it would be the negative of it, which is negative four. The sort key of three would be one, because that's the count of one, 
and then the second sort key would be negative three. So first, this part will be evaluated like this. First, it's gonna look here, okay, these two numbers have the same frequency, there's a tie. So now look at the second key, which is the negative of each number. By default, it's gonna try to sort them in ascending order. So it's gonna say put negative four first, and then put negative three because negative four is of course smaller than negative three. So that means that, you know, what number had this sort key? Four had that sort key and three had this sort key. Therefore, this one is gonna go first, four is gonna be first, and then three is gonna be second. So this is generally high level how you do it in Python. When I say we're gonna provide a sort key, in Python, we actually can only provide a tuple. So we're gonna have like the first part of the sort key and then the second part of the sort key in the form of a tuple. In languages like Java, I think you actually have to do a bit more work. Your sort key will be a function that takes in two parameters, A and B, and you'll have to do some kind of comparison between them. So in Java, you actually have more precise control over how exactly you wanna do it. It's just, I think, a bit more verbose, which if you're a Java person, I don't think I have to probably tell you that. But anyways, given that we're just first counting the occurrences of each number, then doing the sorting, we can implement this in n plus n log n time. So that's the time complexity and big O of n for the space complexity up above. So the first thing we want to do is get the count of each character. I could do that in a hash map for you. I'm going to assume you probably know how to do that portion though. And I have various videos covering how to do that. So in Python, I'm going to take the shortcut of just calling the counter on this. So this will basically create a hash map counting each element. And then we want to take this. We want to take the input array nums and sort it. And then we want to return it. Again, the hard part is how we want to sort it. We can provide a custom key and that can be in the form of a function. Well, it has to be in the form of a function. So I'm going to define that function up above actually. I think we have to do that. We could do a Lambda function, but I'm going to define like a separate function just to kind of make it very, very clear what's going on. We have a function. It's called custom sort, I guess. It'll take in a single parameter. And I don't think we have control over that. It has to take in a single parameter, which is going to be a number from this. And we want to sort it based on the count of that number. But if there's a tie with the count of the number, we have to have it in a very particular order. So we're gonna have a second key. So if there's a tie with this, then it'll use the next element. And it's not gonna be the number itself. It's gonna be the negative of the number because we want them to be in descending order. And so now for the custom key here, all you do is pass in the name of the function. You don't have to call the function. Do not call the function. It won't work in that case. So this will work, I'll show it to you. You can see here it works, it's pretty efficient. If you wanted to rewrite this in the form of a lambda function, AKA an inline function, you could do something like this. It takes in a parameter, let's call it N once again, and then it'll return a tuple. So this is just like a shorthand for what I'm doing up above. It'll return a tuple. I'll just copy and paste this because the content is gonna be the same. This is equivalent to what I have up above. Generally, people prefer to write it below but I thought the previous solution was probably more easy to translate into other languages, even though most languages probably don't have like a tuple. But this also works as you can see here. This time it was more efficient, but that's pretty random. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Before recording this video, I was working on adding some animations to the DSA for Beginners course. We'll be adding like about 100 animations to that over the next few days. Looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll see you soon.